Okay, so um, we're just going to start today the impact is coming down onto our back. So a nice way to start, just come down onto your back. So you can place a blanket like I've done at the top if you like, just for your head. If you prefer just to have something there, just perhaps a folded up blanket a couple of times, nothing too thick. If you want your spine to be in line with your head still. So we'll just come down onto our back. And we're just going to settle here for a moment just with the feet drawn up like this, as wide as the hips. So just relax the shoulders down gradually. And just try to relax the belly here. So if you've been breathing very quickly, rushing around today, just now's the time to just settle the whole of the body down. And just start to connect to your breath, but slowly noticing if you're breathing quickly or if you're breathing more on the inhale or the exhale, so you can just start to recognize what's going on for you, perhaps. Start to slow it down now, gradually. Just make sure you've relaxed your jaw, closed your eyes. Taking this time for you. Relax the whole of your spine down. If you find it uncomfortable in any part of your spine, you can always place something under the lower back. Again, a rolled up blanket can help here, just to help alleviate the lumbar spine if you feel you need it. It's not always comfortable for everyone to lay completely flat. So just again, have as many props as you need around you. If you're new to yin, always have a couple of yoga blocks. If you don't have these, have some books, some cushions, maybe even a pillow, a nice firm pillow if possible. And if you're lucky enough, then a yoga bolster is brilliant for yin. If you haven't got one, put it on your Christmas list. So yeah, let's just try to connect to the breath. So just a nice passive breath during yin practice. We don't need to start to activate the deep abdominals here. We're just nice gentle rhythm. Inhale and exhale. If you can relax your forehead and the third eye and the whole of your face. And just notice what's going on for you today. So as we move through each shape during the in practice, as you'll be aware, we move through gently without too much movement in between them. Sometimes we take a counter pose. And we're just learning to be still in the moment. And I'll guide you through what props you may need to help you along the way. So we're going to move into our first shape now. So staying where you are, we're going to lift the right leg, place it on top of 
the left leg, so just above on the knee. And you can adjust your left foot if you feel it's not quite right. So we're going to take figure four bows or eye of the needle. So this is the first position we'll come into, and you'll already feel if this is enough for you. So we're going to work on stretching the um, hip flexors here, the outer hip. Now, if you know you're particularly stiff, then this may be just perfect for you as you are here. If you want to go a bit deeper for the hip, then you can maybe test out and press onto this right thigh a little bit and push it away from you and see how that feels. Take a couple of breaths here. Stretch out slowly. If you want to go into the next position, it would be to thread the hands. You can either thread it through and interlace on this left thigh behind the knee somewhere, if you can reach. And then, of course, you'll maybe feel a bit more into that outer hip. So depending where you want to work towards, perhaps draw this left knee in more towards you to feel it deeper or leave it further away. If it's more comfortable for you to hang on to the, the knee somewhere, you can wrap the hands the other way on top of the knee. Again, bearing in mind your own body and what's going on for you in that hip. So this is a bit like pigeon pose when we feel it quite strong in the outer hip. And again, just try out one shape at a time. But once you get into your shape, just settle there and we'll be holding this shape for time, so about two minutes. So just know that once you're here, then you're here for the duration. So just closing the eyes. Relax the head still where it's at. Make sure the neck is nice and long in line with your cervical spine. So you don't want to have the head so the chin is all the way up to the ceiling because then you'll be pulling on the lower neck, neck muscles. So try to relax it and just relax both feet on this dorsi stretch. Depending on your composition of your body, you may feel a lot going on here, you may feel just a little bit of a stretch. So just listen in. My right side is always stronger than my left, so I often have things going on in my right hip. So just listen and work towards the edge of stretch that you feel is good for you. And again, you can just really tune out to these shapes. And if you've got music on at home, it's just nice to have something really gentle, really nourishing. Keep the breath nice and passive. Again, we're not going for full abdominal breathing like we would in a vinyasa class. I just notice any sensations occurring now. See if we can just breathe around them. Lots of energy moving around this hip now. Often we feel very stuck and stagnant around the hip area, so we tend to hold a lot of our tension or our baggage stuff going on in our lives. So you can feel a big emotional release sometimes in these shapes. And that might come out as anger or frustration or maybe even tears sometimes, and that's normal. So just notice how much you're gently encouraging the left knee, gently encouraging the right hip to open. Good. And then gently from there, take a deep breath in, exhale out, and just let the left foot drop back down to your mat, and then take the right leg off as well. 
And then you can just settle here in the center or you can take a gentle little motion of dropping the knees to one side and then the other. Just like a windscreen wiper, just release here. Okay, and then we'll come back to center. Readjust your back if you need to, if you feel like it's switch position, so make sure it's in the center. And then we'll switch legs. So we'll take the other leg over this time, left leg onto the right knee or on top of the right thigh. And again, you can assess here how it feels for you. This could be enough for you, just like this today. And just have the hands relaxed down by your side so your shoulders can relax too. Take a couple of breaths in and see if you want to reach through for the stronger stretch. So you could wrap the fingers behind that thigh, pull the leg towards you without tugging, just pull it gently. See how that feels. Anything doesn't feel right, then just replace the foot back down. Again, this shape can be done against a wall if you find that easier. The foot would be flexed, the right foot would be right up onto the wall. And just settle into this shape as you hold it for time. Notice where's the stretch, how deep you're going. So, on a scale of one to ten, you do want to feel something happening. So, perhaps you'll be up at eight or so. But if it's too strong for you, then you just come out of the shape. Again, just closing the eyes, tuning in. Notice that your hips left the floor too much. Sometimes we tend to lift them up if we haven't got a flexibility in our arms. And notice if you need to just pull them back down. Good, and then from there, deep inhale. Exhale, release the hands wherever they are, release the feet back down. And again, just take a moment here to neutralize the spine. And again, take that windscreen wipe side to side to release with the hips. Good. And then we're going to roll onto one side and push our weight on up. Okay. So for the next shape, you'll need 
a couple of maybe one or so yeah blankets nearby um that's probably all we need unless we're going to move forward and then we might have a couple of logs so we're going to take um fire log stretch or sometimes i call it square pose so it's where we're in a nice seated position so just like we would an easy seat again if you tend to roll the spine back when you sit if you know you tend to roll backwards and place even something underneath your bottom as well to lengthen up through the spine and um, you down like this um, if not then you just have the blanket ready for the next stretch so what we're going to do into this pose another one that we're going to get into the hips so we're going to have the just the left leg under like this as if you were coming into easy crisscross shape okay and then instead of just having the ankles crossed or the shins crossed we're going to see if we can lift the right leg on top of the left so it's going to come over the top now this is going to be different for everybody again depending on your constitution so this is why we need to have things nearby to bridge the gaps so if you if you find it really uncomfortable to sit like this you'll know straight away so again go slowly if it's really too strong we can come into a different shape so this is really useful to fill the gap under here. Okay, so first off, if you feel quite comfortable like this, you can come out straight away and sit like this, and then you might feel a stronger stretch into the left hip somewhere or the thigh. Okay, it's gonna be different for everyone. So this is the fire log shape. Okay, so we're more like this. So it's like a proper triangle coming here. So you wanna have a blanket like this so you can just feel that gap if the knee's really high you might even need two because if the knee's up here you need something here to bridge the gap a block would be a bit uncomfortable but it can be done you could have a block here we're trying to obviously get the knee down so it's parallel eventually but play around and see if you have any knee problems you need to be aware of that obviously you'll know about that but please go easy into the shape and if it really doesn't feel right just Take the leg back down okay wherever it feels better for you again you can still pad it out like this but have a go and see if you can get it on top to begin with okay and see how many blocks you need you might even be able to roll the blanket a couple of times okay so just give it a go it might feel a bit alien to you around the pelvis so we're starting to open up a bit here okay and then you can just sit like this in your fire log and you can just have the arms out to the side depending how long your arms are of course or again it's always useful to have a couple of blocks or books you might just rest them on the on the bricks like this just gently and not with coming into the shoulders though so you're just resting them on there and you can just take the gaze forward in front of you somewhere to a spot or just slightly down make sure your head's not completely pulled inwards though because you're really working to the neck muscles there so just Relax, gaze forward here. So again, just settling in. See if you can get there with your own prop. Again, maybe the hands will be just down onto the ground gently. And take a minute or so here. And then we'll see if we can maybe move the arms forward into a deep stretch. But it's up to you. You can just stay like this with a chest lifted more. Again, just having that even flow with the breath. Let's try to relax the neck as well while you're out. Close your eyes if it helps. If you wish to now, you can 
come forward slightly with the arms. So if you do have blocks, they're useful here to just balance your forearms onto, and this will give you a deep stretch again around the outer hip. Okay, so it's up to you. This is going to just take it up a little bit further. So if you're used to doing this pose or your hips feel fairly flexible, then this might be okay for you. If you want to stay higher, that's perfectly fine. And then we want to start to stretch out the fascia of the hip around the hip area. Maybe for you it's more into the thighs or could be the groin area. Going from here, wherever you are, just start to breathe deeper. Three times and start to make your way on up slowly. And again, just take this leg and just take it over to the front. Okay, and then maybe just lift the legs up and you could give your Knees a little rotation again here if you wish. Somewhere willing. Okay, so we're going to take this onto the other side. So again, remembering what leg we did before. And we'll have the right leg threaded under this time. So you could be slightly different on the other side. So we'll just switch your props over. See if you can take this left leg on top of the right. The foot might slip down, that's okay for now. Just eventually we'll work towards bringing it up and flexing into that dorsal flex here with the foot eventually, but don't worry if you're not there today. And again, just pad out if you need it. If you feel you need to fill that gap under the knee so it's fully just rested here. If you feel you're fine without it, just making sure that, that foot is flexed and the one underneath can be flexed too if you are a bit more um, fluid around the hips. Okay, so it's kind of like a square pose. So let's just start high again. So take the hands out, relax the arms. Again, take whatever you've got there. You need to just rest your hands on a couple of cushions. I'm just sitting with a nice tall spine to begin with on this side. And again, in your own time, you can just make your way forward. If you've got a couple of props to Rest upon you can just take your arms forward, relax the shoulders. You'll feel this deepness around the hip if you are coming forward, so go easy.
And then here you're working with the emotions of compassion and and anger. It's normal to feel these inside these shapes. Sometimes we get a bit emotional release. Again, for the yin, it is good to be good now. So if you're reading on the lifestyle, which a lot of us do, then yin is the perfect antidote to work on the other element. Yin is generally a cooling practice. And then we hold the shapes to start to get deep into the connective tissue. And we hold for stillness and for time. Anywhere from two minutes, three, maybe even up to even five or six. Sometimes if you have a longer practice, but generally in an hour class, it's not going to be that long. And then take an inhale. And exhale out of the belly. And again, inhale. And exhale, release. And make your way on up or wherever you went to with the shape. And just slowly move, release the blanket if you use one. And you may feel a bit stiff just to begin with. So just move carefully, a bit clumpy. Okay, so we're moving on to the next shape now. We're going to be prone. So you want to take a block, preferably if you have one or a firm book, which you could wrap around with a, a, a blanket to make it a bit softer because you're going to place your forehead on it. So it wants to be comfortable. Um, a cushion perhaps, if it's at the right depth. So I'll show you what we're going to do. So for some people, when they come onto their bellies, they might like to pad out a bit of extra cushioning. So if you do have a bolster, or you can get flatter bolsters than this, they're really nice to play sometimes here. Um, you may have to put a blanket under your hips if you feel they're a bit bony. Um, but I'll show you what we're coming into. And the legs are going to come out, if you can, into a froggy shape. <laughs> so this is the one also that gets around hips a lot. So it's up to you. Um, some people like to pad out the knees a bit here as well, um, depending if your knees come off your mat. Um, so I'll show you quickly um, how to get into the shape. So it's up to you. So you might like to come down with the knees first and then bring the knees up. But basically your pelvis will be off the ground. So make sure you have enough space. And it might be like a froggy like this. You'll try to sit the hips back and your head will come just resting onto the block. Okay, so you might be like this and it feels quite strong at first around the hip creases. Okay, so you might be like this with the knees out and it's gonna feel strong around the hips. Now, if it feels too strong as well, a really good thing to use is the bolster here so it holds the whole of your pelvis okay and then you don't really need the block as much you might just put it on its side 
like this to make sure the neck's in one nice long line with the spine. So you don't want to have the head just hanging down like this. Um, so that's an option or a big pillow. Okay, if you're going to go for it without, um, you could even have something rolled up under here and rest your head on the block the other way. So the, you might be quite high. Okay, so you can take the knees out and the toes come out. And then you want to settle the hips back just as much as you can. Okay, so froggy is meant to be uncomfortable, so don't worry. <laughs> so we're not going to stay here ages, don't worry. So make sure you've got as much props as you need. Okay, it feels really, really strong. You can just come out of the leg part of it. Try it for a minute and see because it feels tight even for me. So it's it's just because you're not used to outwardly rotating the, the hips like this. So we're going to work into a lot of outward rotation here through the hips, through the inner thighs and the quads. So you want to just open up slowly. So some people might be able to get the bottom back a bit lower or the legs out, the feet splayed out. If it's too strong for you, then you may wish to, again, just come out of it and draw the knees in and you'll be sitting more back into the child posture. Or again, the block can be really useful here. Oh, sorry, the roster. Make sure the hands are relaxed by your sides. Allow the head to be supported right on your forehead. So with the weight of your head just onto the, the block, then it actually allows you to draw away any tension here as well. You want to have it throughout the day in your head. And your head aches with this pressure point here. From here, we're going to slowly come out of this shape wherever you are. Fingers are going to work the inner hips a lot and maybe even the groin. So just draw your knees in towards you. Just remove the block for a moment. And just sit back towards your heels if you can and settle the head down. And we'll just settle back into this relaxed child's posture for just a moment here. Release the head down if the head doesn't come to the floor. Have your block there to support. And then I'm just going to raise up. Okay, so the next show we're going to do a little bit similar. So if you do have some bricks, that'll be really good because we're going to use two of them here. If not, again, it might be books to use something sturdy. And we're going to come into a child's posture variation. It's actually a melting heart variation. So melting heart is more like um puppy pose, so you're working into the thoracic spine. Um, but for this one, we're just going to come into a regular child's pose with uh, big toes together, knees out as much as you like. Have the two blocks this way, 
So you're going to have your forearms onto them like this, okay? And then when you come down, you're going to rest the head down like this, and then you're going to bring the, the hands up behind the head like this. So these, these are going to work more into your shoulders a bit. So you can either just have the forearms down, okay, and work like this a bit higher. Then make sure the neck's again in line, crown of the head forward. This could be the first variation. And then you may like to take it a bit deeper with the backs of the arms coming onto it. And then the hands might come behind into prayer. So this is where you're going to get a deeper stretch for your spine and the back of the thoracic spine, which is where we tend to just get quite stuck. So this is going to allow it to melt down. That's hence why it's called melting heart pose. So we can maybe take the hands behind and feel something going on here with this upper arm. Okay, so just make your way down in your own time. Find which one works for you. Maybe start here and see onto something raised. Okay, so again, just settling here, settling your mind, not thinking too much. Yeah, you're just being in the moment and accepting what's going on for you. Maybe one's different, so it's not going to look the same for all of you. It's always going to be slightly different, the shape. Again, if you come down further into melting heart, just making sure if your hands are in prayer that they're just resting on the back of the head, top of the head. They're just there to hold in place, really. So the wrists are kind of touching the head, but you're not yanking on the head down. So you want to feel that the stretch is happening into that upper scapula, the shoulders, and the upper spine is releasing. Again, using your breath here, it might feel a bit stronger. So just relaxing, feeling the space between the inhale, feeling the space between the exhale. Taking that pause between each one. Noticing what's going on in your arms, your shoulders, perhaps feeling that little bit of tension, resistance in the upper body. Perhaps noticing some difference into your hips now after working quite a few of the postures around the pelvis. So just try to relax there, settle down. Start to breathe deeper now towards your pelvis. A couple of times. And you'll start to rise up slowly. Just draw the knees in together for a moment. Removing the bricks out of the way. Okay, and then just take your toes and place them into the mat. We're just going to stretch out the back of the feet. 
the planter. So see if you can maybe take a toe pose. Don't worry if you can't. So you just draw the knees together, place the hands lightly. Stretch the feet in the other direction just for a moment. Good. All right, so from here, we're coming into a low dragon variation. So again, we want to bring the right foot forward, keep the back knee down. You might wish to pad it out again, see how your knees feel today. Just give that extra cushioning. And we're gonna come into this low dragon. So we're not gonna go for the full dragon today with the hands down or onto blocks. We're just gonna see if we can come forward, bend to the hip crease, and just see if we can hold it here. If this feels too much for you, you can always back off, we stretch, and just be in a more upright position, okay? If you feel it's okay, you can sink the left hip forward, and then just hang onto the thigh and sink forward, and just take that to what feels good for you. So we're just going to slowly open up here. Again, it can feel quite strong, so keep breathing nice and steadily. Again, sometimes the knees can feel uncomfortable, so you really want to make sure you've padded out as much as you can. And either staying here or maybe coming in to the next stage where we're going to reach back for this foot. Okay, so you really want to be steady into the front foot if you're taking this one. I don't know why my left knee's hurting so much at the moment. Um, so let's sink in and then you need to be able to reach down, lift the back foot up and reach around. Okay, so this can feel quite a challenge, all right? So this can be considered more of a yang shape. So don't worry if you're not going to get through it today. Okay, so sometimes the front foot may need to walk out a little bit, create a bit of space. Okay, so the hand might be down onto the ground. Again, you could use a block here, but we're just going for a different feel into this left leg. So we want to stretch the front of the quads. Breathe a lot here. Again, this one fires up quite a lot of muscles, so. Good, then we're gonna release that back down, okay? And slowly sliding the front leg back and just settle back onto your hands and knees a minute and perhaps just settle, maybe lift the pelvis side to side. Find a little movement here, whatever feels good for you. Okay, so now we're going to switch it up and move to the other side. It could be entirely different on this side. So again, fill the gap for the knee if you need. Bring the left leg around to the front. Again, adjust the stance. If you wanna go for the wider foot, you can. Try to square off the hips as much as possible. Lean into the stretch. Okay, go easy again, so we've done quite a bit of hip work. So again, you might feel it more into the hip flexors. If you're tight here, you could stay more upright and just hang on to the leg like we started with before, support yourself here if you need. Really activate the foot underneath, lift the inner arches, but press all the toes down to the ground. And just keep the gaze soft.
again. If you wish to go a bit deeper, you can. Reaching down, using a block perhaps with the left hand or reaching all the way down. And you'll just maybe slide this back, knee back slightly. And then see if you can pick up the back foot. Okay, so even that can be challenging. Don't worry. See if you can lift the leg, activate, and then reach around. And then by just gently holding onto this foot, you're getting a really deep stretch for your quads here. And just keep the gaze gentle at the front. Feeling the warmth happening through the muscles, through the fascia opening up. We don't often stretch the quadriceps, so this is actually a really effective one to take. Then slowly releasing down now, taking a couple of breaths there and make your way on out carefully. And again, we're just going to take a little movement for the hips. So just perhaps walking the hips side to side, releasing here. Okay, now work your way down onto your backs now carefully. Come down and we're going to draw the knees into our chest into a panasana. So this is where we want to have the bottom making contact with the mat rather than lifting up. So again, placing something underneath like a blanket can help. We're just going to stay here for a moment just to neutralize after being in these deep stretches with the hips. So just don't take the knees too wide, just perhaps have them more in today. a couple of deep breaths here. And then you can just place your feet back down to the mat and stretch your body out fully into your Shavasana. Final resting shape. So if you do have a bolster, you can place it underneath the thighs. That can feel quite nice to relax the legs belly or just stretch fully out on the mat. Use whatever you've got there at home. Maybe put a blanket over you if you wish. It really will cool down. And then just have the palms up to the sky. Keep the feet as wide as you like. Close the eyes. Just allow the whole body to settle now onto your mat.
allow the whole body to release now, allow the pelvis to be fully rested. And your heart space to be open. And the spine to feel fully supported. Just slowly sending some awareness through your body. Start to bring some warmth and breathing a bit deeper. And take a big deep inhale and exhaling out. Letting everything go. And then wiggle the fingers or give yourself a big stretch overhead. 